Hello, thank you for joining me. This is part three of my National Trust passport videos. So in the first and second video, I talked you through my first and second passports, told you a bit about every property in there. Um, in this one, we're gonna go through my third passport. So you can see the design has changed a bit since then. Um, I've filled up five so far. My sixth one isn't finished and the pink one is my girlfriend. So just to show you the variety of passports or how they've changed through the years rather. So my third property, so let's have a look. Um, where, do, where did I go? So it starts in 2002. And the first property is Snows Hill Manor. Now Snows Hill Manor, I really would love to go back to. It's, it's possibly one of the most fascinating properties I've ever been to. The bloke who lived there, he collected everything. I, when I say everything, I mean everything. Um, you know, everything, literally everything. The loft was full of bikes. There must have been over a hundred bikes. I mean, imagine taking a hundred bikes up the stairs to the loft. It was quite fascinating. There were grandfather clocks in every room and every one of them was set to a different time. So the idea was, if you go in, if you step foot, if you step foot in Snow's Hill Manor for at least 10 minutes, you're gonna hear a clock chime. And um, there was stuff from all around the world. It was amazing. Now, there's an interesting story with Snow Hill Manor and model villages. Now, most people, would be right to say, well you would be right to say Beckham Scott Model Village is the oldest model village. It is the oldest model village existing. It's not the first model village. The first model village was run was built by this gentleman. It was over in Hampstead in London. Now when I went there they had some of the houses from that model village displayed outside in the garden. But what's happening since then, a group of people decided to recreate that model village complete with a railway. So at some point we're going to have to go there, not only to see Snow Hill Manor, but to see this model village. So best of luck to them with creating that model village. I'm really going to look forward to seeing that develop. So that's Snow Hill Manor in the Cotswolds. Staying in the Cotswolds, we've got Hinton, I'm uh, sorry, Hitchcote Manor Garden. It's, um, it was a, it's a garden designed by an American, I believe, and it's like lots of different rooms. So you kind of step from, it's like walking around a house, but you're outside. So you step from one room to another, but it's one garden to another. So each garden's perhaps surrounded by a hedge or a wall, and as you step into the next one, you're in a different theme of garden. So quite a fascinating place. Um, like I said in the last um, two videos, some of them I have made Henry's Adventures at, but the vast majority of them I haven't. Um, and I'd just love to go to them all again and make videos. And then of course go to the ones I haven't been to and also make videos and of course fill up my passport. So where are we do where do I go next? Sutton House. In Hackney in London. Quite a fascinating house, very built up area. They've since opened a scrapyard, believe it or not. I really should go back and see that. I'd like I'd be fascinated to see that. So that's Sutton House. The next one. In Oxfordshire, Grays Court. Grays Court, um, so it's up near Henley on Thames. I remember within the grounds, there's ruins of an earlier house. So I'm sure that would make a great Henry's Adventure video. And I think from the earlier house, there's a tower and you can possibly go climb up the tower. So that's Grays Court and um, it's also got quite an, a fascinating wider estate. Where's the next one? 2003 now, Oxborough Hall. Now, Oxborough Hall really is quite fascinating. It's where I first ever saw a priest hole. It says priest holes in Oxborough Hall. It's, it's completely moated, and at the front it's got very tall, big, tall towers. You can go up on the roof. I remember doing a big state walk. And next to it was the parish church was half ruined because the tower had collapsed like that and demolished most of the nave. Um, but the, what was left of the nave has been rebuilt into a smaller church, and it has no tower. So where did I go to next? Um, oh, Wimple Hall and Home Farm. Wimple Hall is a very vast property. Um, we were stopping there on the way back from a holiday in Norfolk and I remember being a bit disappointed we didn't stay that long. I was you know, still quite young at the time. It's got a home farm so I mean, by the time we looked at all the animals, been around the house and looked at the gardens, there simply wasn't time to do the estate walk. But for me that was frustrating because I remember from the house you looked across Quite a way away was a folly, a ruined folly. So basically, a castle built as a ruin. And I really wanted to see it. So I'm going to have to go back at some point and do that. Now, the next one's a bit of an interesting one. Um, 
rather than a stamp, I've got a ticket. It's the manor house in Princess Risborough in Buckinghamshire. Princess Risborough, most of you who watch my channel know me for railways. Chiller and Princess Risborough Railway is the same town. You do have to visit this one by appointment, so um, you have to, you, I'm not sure how it works now. You used to have to write to them and request a visit, basically. So that's the manor house in Princess Risborough. Um, it's opposite the church in Princess Risborough, and um, it's also opposite the house where Amy Johnson lived, the first female aeroplane pilot. Here's our next property, Hatchlands Park. Hatchlands Park is in Surrey. It's um, quite a, a vast estate. I've been there a couple of times. If you do the wider estate, well, you can actually walk right down to one of the railway lines, um, Southern Region railway lines in Surrey. So it's quite quite a fascinating property. Croft Castle up in Herefordshire. Now that's an interesting one. It's um, so you've got the property. I'm trying to think what I remember. There was a church out the front. Gardens out the back, and we did wider estate walk. Now, our next one is Coton Court. I remember making the joke when I went there, I was like, we'd better wear our coats because we're going to Coton Court. So, Coton Court, um, interesting property, as they all are. It's got two churches, I think one's Protestant, one's Catholic, but they're literally next door to each other within the estate. Um, and there was a river flowing through the estate, so again, very nice property. Um, it's one you can see quite clearly if you drive past. It's at, um, I remember driving to Stratford upon Avon once and you drove past it and you got a perfect view of it from the road. Our next one, going back down to Surrey, Holston Lacey. That is, um, well it's down in Surrey. It's, it's a, I think it's a Georgian era house. I remember you know, exploring the gardens as we did and um, the wider estate. I'm being quite fascinated how a road goes up the estate and from one garden you go over a bridge over a public road I believe. It might have just been a farm track but basically somewhere outside. It was a public right away outside of the paved area of the National Trust over a bridge into another garden. So that was Poles and Lacey. This one's a funny one. Shoot Barton. I don't remember too much but it was a property um, we visited in, down in Devon, quite a small one. Don't remember a lot about it really. Um, our next one, do remember it on the same day? I remember this one a bit more distinctly, is Longwood Meeting House. It's um, an old, I think it's a Baptist chapel, but I do remember that you just sort of go there, go and have a look, a bit like going in any church, it just happens to be National Trust. Our next one is Kingston Lacey. So we have Poles and Lacey, now we have Kings and Lacey. Kings and Lacey's down in Dorset, down near Wimborne Minster. Um, I'm trying to think what I remember of it. I, I rem one thing I remember with this one that was good was that you could actually, you went on every floor of the house, even up into the loft, which is quite unusual for National Trust properties. Some of them you only even go on the ground floor, but this one I think you went up, there was like a third and possibly even a fourth floor. I definitely remember going up into the loft. Our next one is Lodge Park. That's in the Cotswolds. We weren't supposed to go there that day. We were going on holiday to Wales. We got stuck in a massive traffic jam on the motorway. We were hoping to aim a bit further away from home. Um, and it was kind of getting time, you know, we needed to stop somewhere for lunch. So we ended up going to Lodge Park. Now Lodge Park, we didn't do a walk or anything there, but what you see is basically a grandstand for um, one of the sports they used to play. So it's, it's a, quite a small building, but you stand on the roof and watch as one of the racing sports. Um, I wouldn't like to say because I might get it wrong, but that's what Lodge Park is. Our next one is Berrington Hall in Herefordshire. It's only a few days later, so we must have been going. I remember we were going on holiday to Wales up near, um, what's the nearest town? Near near Knighton, which is on the English Welsh border. So we drove down, staying in England, um, to Berrington Hall. You can actually see this property. If you get a train from on the Welsh Marches line, um, you do catch a glimpse if you look out at the right time. So Barrington Hall, another property, quite a big estate. Remember doing the estate walk. Our next one, come to his lower Brockhampton. There's the whole Brockhampton estate. There's, um, there is one 
big stately home which you can't go to. The one you go to is a Tudor one down at the bottom of the hill. And I believe it's moated and um, there was a ruined church on the other side of the moat. So that's quite a fascinating one. It's one of these vast ones, um, but the actual house you see is the Tudor house rather than the main house. My next one is Montpessant House. in the um, Cathedral Close in Salisbury. So it's an urban one. I think it did have a garden out the back, but that day, I don't know too much about National Trust property, but I distinctly remember the most exciting thing was we went up the Cathedral at Salisbury Cathedral, went up the Tower of Salisbury Cathedral. So I do distinctly remember that. It just went on forever, you're just going up steps forever. Of course, it's 404 feet high, it's the tallest Cathedral Spire in the UK. You don't actually go to the top of the Spire, you go to the base of the Spire, but it's, must be the highest I've been up in a church. Although I have been up Cologne Cathedral since, I might have gone up higher, but anyway, this video is not about cathedrals. Now this next one is an interesting one. It's called Phillips House and Dinton Park. So it's Dinton Park, but the house is called Phillips House. Um, and we stayed nearby, so we'd actually go for each evening of this holiday we to go for a walk around the estate. Now, the actual house, there's a model of it at Beckenscott Model Village. It's not meant to be it, but the country club at Beckenscott Model Village, they just took this and decided to build a model of it. So if you go to Beckenscott Model Village, you'll see Philip's house. Our next property is Runnymede. Runnymede is near Windsor, it's on the River Thames. It's quite well known, it's most famous here. Point is, is where the, the Magna Carta was signed. It's um, got some other fascinating things about it. There's a piece of land that if you go to it, you're in America. It's where the John F. Kennedy Memorial is. So we gave a few acres to America. So you can actually, it's the one place in the UK you can actually go to America. There's also the gatehouses to Runnymede, designed by Edwin Lutchins, who I mentioned in an earlier passport, also designed Castle Drogo. Up on the hill, Above Running Mead is the Air Forces Memorial, so you can go and see the Air Forces Memorial. It's not actually a National Trust, but you could walk up there from Running Mead and you get if you go on the roof of it, which you can do, you get brilliant views over West London, basically. Where's our next one? Standon. Now Standon is also near the Bluebell Railway. I mentioned earlier Sheffield Park. It's not quite so near, but I remember walking around the grounds at Standon, you could hear steam trains on the Bluebell um, Railway. It's um, an arts and crafts house, it's got lovely gardens, so it's a, a different era to some of the others. But um, there's the arts and crafts ones I tend to have been to a bit later on, they tend to come up in the, the later passports, so um, there'll be more of them to come soon. This one's quite interesting one, it's Shaw's Corner. It's in Hertfordshire, it's where George Bernard Shaw lived. I believe it's the only National Trust property where the, um, the person who lived there won an Oscar because on the whole, the National Trust, the people who owned the National Trust properties for the National Trust weren't those sort of people. But yeah, George Bernard Shaw, he's got an Oscar. His house feels quite normal, but just like a, normal, a big house with a big garden. It's not a stately home as such, but it's, it's a different era, it's fascinating. The village of Aox St Lawrence is also very exciting. Another place I should go and do Henry's Adventures. Um, there's some interesting churches and stuff there, so perhaps one day we'll go there again. Our next one, Upton House. That's near Banbury up in Oxfordshire. Um, it, I can't remember, it's been right on the edge of a ridge, so the house is up high, you get good views, and the gardens really drop. It's quite steeply down the hill. Our next one is Erdig in Wales. Um, it's often said to be one of the best estates ever because it's it's just it's um, it's quite a, it, lots of things have happened there over the years. Um, parts of the estate, I think there's mining subsidence, so it has been a bit there's been a few problems there, but you know it's all nicely restored, and you can do some really very exciting walks. When I went there, I remember they had horses not ploughing the lawn, mowing the lawn. These giant lawn mowers powered by horses. So they sometimes do those demonstrations. They also have a steam fire engine in steam. It's the first time I've ever seen one in steam. And then staying in the same area, Chirk Castle. 
I've done a video at Chirk um, a couple of years ago. Have a look at the link on screen now. That video talks about the aqueduct and the viaduct and the tunnel on the canal. But up on the hill above there is Chirk Castle. So it's a castle that's become a stately home. Again, it's got a lovely gardens and it's got a good estate walk. So I wouldn't suggest you perhaps went there by train. That might be a little bit far from the railway station, but you know, it's um, an interesting. But if you do go to Chirk Castle, do park in the village on your way back and walk over the viaduct, um, the aqueduct rather, and through the tunnel if um, you fancy walking in the dark for a quarter of a mile. Right, just two more on this one. Claydon House. It's up in Buckinghamshire, North Bucks. Um, interestingly, you'll soon be able to see the railway line from Claydon House because the railway line from Oxford to Bletchley is being reopened. Um, so you'll get a good view of that from Claydon House. Claydon House is quite fascinating. It's only a third of what it once was. The house is one wing, and then there'd have been a, a grand sort of hall and then an identical wing on the other side. And the rest of it was demolished, unfortunately, because of the window tax. So it's that era. And then our final one, this one, you can't get anymore. It's a stamp that doesn't exist. It's the National Trust Shop in Stratford-upon-Avon. What the National Trust used to do, they don't seem to do it anymore, they have, they'd have shop, quite a lot of shops at naturally touristy towns and cities, places like York and Canterbury and Wales, Stratford-upon-Avon. And you go into the shop, and the shop really is just a shop that sells the stuff you'd expect at one of the estates. But um, there was just no house, it just is simply a high street a shop on the, on the street. But they'd have a stamp. Now, they've closed this shop, so you can't get this stamp anymore, so I'm glad I got it. So that was my final stamp in this passport, the um, National Trust shop at Stratford-on-Avon. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, got two more to come. I'll go through my next two passports. So, um, you know, go and visit them. Buy yourself a passport. See if you can catch me up. Maybe you're way ahead of me. Maybe you've been to, you know, maybe you're on your 10th passport. If you are, I'd love to hear from you. What, what's the most passports anyone's ever filled up? I'd be very interested to know. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Thank you very much. Goodbye.